Good morning and welcome to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. Our focus today is on race relations. It is a privilege for me to have two special guests that represent outstanding organizations that have a long, rich history of making a difference in our city. The uh, JCC, the original JCC, was founded in 1894 and it's committed to meeting the ever-changing needs of the Jewish community. The Milwaukee Urban League, it was founded in 1919 and advocated on behalf of African Americans and against racial discrimination in the U.S. Mark Shapiro, he's the president and CEO of the JCC, and Dr. Eve Hall, she's the president and CEO of the Milwaukee Urban League. How are you? Great. Good morning. Glad to have both of you here. And the interesting thing is you both have been here before, but uh, the unique scenario is now you guys have collaborated for a very special event, and that's what brings you here today. So uh, first tell us what created this collaboration. So well, Mark. it was uh, um, probably about a year ago. Uh, we started looking at, we were coming on the 50th anniversary of the fair housing marches here in mm -hmm. Milwaukee and throughout the country. and. Uh, I'm also working on a board of directors where we're planning a biennial that's going to be in Memphis. We were looking at working with Bernice King, and I started thinking to myself, I wonder if um, we were looking at a picture of the marches 50 years ago, going mm -hmm. across the bridges in Selma. And in the Jewish community, it's a really important time in our history also. Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel was one of the leaders who stood arm in arm with Dr. King as they marched. He often talked about the fact that on those times he was praying with his feet. Mm -hmm. We began to look at, um, we knew about Bernice, but we began to ask the question of, I wonder if Rabbi Heschel has any children? And sure enough, one of our staff members is friends with Susanna Heschel, the daughter of, of Rabbi Heschel. Mm -hmm. And we began to think about how amazing would it be to bring these two together? And we have a long history of the Jewish community and the black community working together, especially in the areas of civil rights. Mm -hmm. Who else would you reach out to but to partner with <laughs> this community than the Urban League and Dr. Hall? And we made a phone call, got of course a, an instantaneous yes, and off we go. And here you are. And so we'll talk about this very special event uh, in detail before this segment ends. But if you would, Dr. Hall, talk about uh, uh, the importance of this particular uh, event that's coming up. Well, first of all, I was very excited to receive a call from Mark. We were supposed to be getting together for quite some time anyway, <laughs> so this is perfect. Um, but, you know, just to know that um, he and um, his team at JCC were so thoughtful about race relations occurring in our city and nationally, um, I was immediately interested because, as you mentioned earlier, um, you know, as an urban league, while we have focused on employment, education, economic development, it's always been based around making sure that we were included in employment opportunities, in educational opportunities, in economic development opportunities, and race unfortunately has been a hindrance and used so often in our country to mm -hmm. separate people. And so this really gives us an opportunity, I think, between Mark and myself to make a statement about the platform that must continue between our two communities. and and just a platform to promote again the importance of diversity yeah. and the importance of embracing and respecting differences. Yeah, so when you look at uh, relations between African Americans and uh, Jews, you've got in the early 20th century Jewish newspapers who actually compared the black movement out of the South to the exodus from Egypt. Mm -hmm. And then another important aspect to keep in mind, of course, uh, African Americans and Jews experiencing injustice, racism, and hatred, of course, through the Holocaust and slavery. Mm -hmm. uh, the American Jewish Committee the American Jewish Congress and the Anti-Defamation League, they were central to the campaign against racial prejudice. Jews made substantial financial contributions to many civil rights organizations, including the NAACP and the Urban League. And then, not to mention, I read that there was 50% of the civil rights uh, attorneys at that time were Jewish. Mm -hmm. So, well, very if you saw the Marshall story, as mm -hmm. an example, it was, it was a magnificent story that I really don't think received the kind of attention that it should have because at the center of the story, the recent Marshall movie, it was about a relationship between Thurgood Marshall and a Jewish lawyer mm -hmm. who, you know, they became best friends, but, you know, and it didn't start off that way, but they learned how much um, they had in 
common, what they could do together, and together they made a huge difference. That's amazing. So let's talk about this event so that people at home can jot down notes and definitely make sure they're there. You actually mentioned Bernice King, who is the youngest daughter of the late, great Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And then we have Susanna Heschel, who is an author and editor of numerous books, and she is the daughter of uh, Rabbi Heschel. Correct. And they are going to come together on stage and talk about all the great things that their fathers have accomplished over, uh, you know, the course of time, and then how they are pushing forward with those messages. This is amazing. Tell us more about it. So it's going to be Sunday. March 4th mm -hmm. at the Paps Theater at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's general um, admission, but the, all the tickets are free. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's really simple. We want this to be a community event accessible to everybody. Yeah. All you have to do is go to www.jccmilwaukee.org, our webpage, click on the link, sign up for the tickets, then we'll send you an email where you can go and pick them up starting next week. And it's just available to everybody. We want anybody and everybody to be a part of this conversation. It's being moderated by Bonnie North. Okay. And we're really excited because while we're looking to Bernice and Susanna to tell us some of the inside stories, you know, they, they actually grew up together as kids. They had dinner together when they were younger. Wow. Mm -hmm. They haven't seen each other for, for a very long time. <clears throat> I'm kind of stunned they haven't, no one else has asked them to do this. I'm really proud of Milwaukee for being the first to, yeah. to host this conversation. Um, I think it's about time for them to have a chance to talk about what it is to grow up in the, the shadows of their fathers, mm -hmm. but more to take their own feet. So what, it, what bridges are they marching across? Mm -hmm. um, how are they praying with their own feet? It's a perfect time for it to be two daughters of these yeah. great leaders. It's a perfect time for us to have strong female leaders in both the Jewish and the African American community sitting on stage and inspiring a generation to not wait 50 more years to get back together again. I think that's what Dr. Hall and I mm -hmm. are most excited about. Mm -hmm. I am so excited about Sunday, March 4th, but not nearly as excited as I am about Monday, March 5th. I don't know what Monday, March 5th is gonna bring us yet, oh. but with Dr. Hall and I, and the community coming together this way, mm -hmm. we're just not gonna wait 50 more years for right. the next conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't wanna wait 50 more days, right. so we need to figure right. it out. And, I love and that. so, you just go to our website. Everyone's invited. Everyone's not only invited, we expect you to be there. These You're are important. Expected. <laughs> and, and I think That's it's right. really important that we say this. You're expected to be there yeah. because you can't keep smacking down Milwaukee and saying what's wrong That's unless true. you're going to show up and be part of the conversations. They're going to make it better. I and that's it. what we're honored to be doing is bringing conversations that are going to change us as a community when we talk about race relations. I'd rather be a beacon of hope than a beacon of what's wrong. So uh, what I'd like to do is really set the stage for our viewers at home and give them an opportunity to see a clip of Susanna Heschel talking about her father, uh, Dr. King, and the civil rights movement. So let's take a quick look at that. They come from such totally different backgrounds. My father from a Hasidic family in Warsaw, and Martin Luther King from a Baptist background in the American South. It's a very odd combination, and, and it's one of the American miracles. They had similar theological sensibilities. My father discovered a Christian who was making the Hebrew Bible the center of the American discussion. Amazing. And he was very moved by that. And the fact that my father wrote the book on the prophets also was very important. Andrew Young told me that everybody had a copy of that book on the prophets and carried it around in their pocket. And of course, I know I did, and I've kept it on my desk ever since. Huh. Yeah, it's one of the books I, I, when I, when I move, I know where that book is. I have always uh, seen him as a kind of intellectual father. And whenever I get a little down or depressed, I go get one of his books and I read the prophet Isaiah and what he has to say about Isaiah. Because Isaiah was written at a time of the desolation of Israel. And yet it's the loftiest vision of dreams for humankind. It's people's ability to have faith in the midst of persecution and destruction that black Americans tapped into. And if you notice Martin Luther King's speeches, he quotes from the prophets more than almost anybody else. And he got a lot of those insights from his study of Rabbi Heschel. Wow, that was one amazing video. So I'm gonna give you a chance to sum it up, if you can, in one word. Wow. <laughs> wow, yeah, yeah. Dr. It's Hall. just heart provoking. 
Okay, you got two, I'm so sorry. that's fine. Right. <laughs> you know, I said I had to keep it together. Yeah, it, it was powerful. So uh, that is given an example as to what you have brought together uh, with the Urban League and the JCC, bringing the daughters of these two men together to really teach us all something. And it's very important. So I'm so happy that you're here to share that message with us. I did want to talk quickly, if we can. Uh, there is a, a Jewish and African American uh, exhibit at the JCC as well well as the Jewish Museum, which is located on North Prospect Avenue. And this is some pretty powerful stuff as well. Absolutely. The exhibit at the Jewish Museum Milwaukee, which is in the Milwaukee Jewish Federation's building on Prospect, is very powerful. Again, it's one of those stories that I think somehow has gotten lost. And what Dr. Hall and I are trying to do is bring the story back to the forefront of how powerful it can be when two communities come together for good and to try and create opportunities. At the JCC, we're currently exhibiting amazing portraits by a photographer named Jim Cedar. Um, Dr. Hall is one of the portraits of our strongest um, black leaders in Milwaukee. Wow. And just the statement it makes to have kids walking down the hallways of a Jewish community center in Whitefish Bay and, and have the chance to see these magnificent black and white photos of leaders is a statement of what our future is supposed to be together. Mm -hmm. Not to just tolerate each other, right, yes, Dr. Hall? Yes, yes, he We don't want to just tolerate like each other. <laughs> our goal is to celebrate That's the things right. that are about each other. That's right. Tolerance is, is the bare minimum of where we should be. I don't want to just tolerate people. I want to celebrate them. Yeah, this gives me uh, so much hope for the city of Milwaukee because like you said, we're always saying what's wrong, what are the issues, but uh, this is what it takes uh, in order for all of us to take a step forward and see change in the city where we live. So quickly, uh, there is a free community day coming up on Sunday, March 4th, which happens to be the same day as this outstanding event at the Jewish Museum. And I wanted to mention it because you can take a civil rights history tour to explore Milwaukee's historic civil rights sites and including the James Groppy Unity Bridge, the Bronzeville Loop, there are statues of Belle Phillips and uh, Golda Meir, all these great things. So uh, that's taking place on Sunday, March 11th, and you can go to that uh, website at jewishmuseummilwaukee.org. But other than that, I just really want to thank you both for coming by, sharing this information, and more than anything, inviting all of our, our viewing audience to take part. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Always a pleasure. Mark Shapiro, he's the president and CEO of the Harry and Rose Sampson Family Jewish Community Center. And Dr. Eve Hall, she's the president and CEO of the Milwaukee Urban League. Praying with their feet, a conversation with Bernice King and Susanna Heschel. It's again happening Sunday, March 4th at 3 p.m. at the Paps Theater. It's a free community event, but you must reserve a ticket at jccmilwaukee.org. When we return to Our Issues Milwaukee, we're going to continue our conversation about race relations. We'll find out more about the YWCA Southeast Wisconsin, discuss the impact of racism and what we can do about it. We'll do that right after this.